when my guest speaks, people smell supernatural antiseptic and are healed of infections and diseases. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. It's hard for me to believe. I look at my guest, Stephen Brooks. I, I've met your wife. I've met your daughter. You have a worldwide ministry, signs and wonders. You prophesy. The prophecies come to pass. You've prophesied over me, and it's come to pass. Uh, so I know you hear from God, but it's hard to believe, Stephen, that 20 years ago, it's hard for me to believe when I, when I look at Stephen now. 20 years ago, he was single. He lost his job. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you couldn't go to your parents. Right. Uh, why? Well, Sid, uh, Sid, it was a tough situation all around. I had just recently received the baptism in the Holy Spirit at that time in my life. I began to speak in tongues. I was introduced uh, to a church that believed in these types of things. I was totally unaware of it before, so it was all brand new to me. And I went back and I told the old denomination that I came out of uh, that, that miracles are still happening. God still is doing miracles today. These things are real. And uh, when I joined the church, they gave me the right hand of fellowship. But when I told them that, they gave me the left foot of fellowship. I was on the way out. Uh, my family didn't understand me. They had been raised in this certain denomination all their life that did not believe in miracles. And uh, so when these things happened to me, uh, a lot of my family and close friends did not understand what I was going through. So when I was in a time of great need, they did not want to help me. They thought it was some type of judgment upon my life. And, and so you, you got two months behind in rent. And he does the honorable thing. He says, I'm not going to get into debt anymore. He doesn't have a job. He looks for a job. He can't get a job. Uh, and so he gets in his car. He, he's driving out of town and he sees a cardboard box. Why would you grab that cardboard box? What did it look like, by the way? Well, it was a large cardboard box, not your normal cardboard box. It looked like somebody had taken a refrigerator out of it, uh, unpacked it and just threw the box aside and something told me that I was going to need that. And, and so I popped a, uh, stopped my car, popped the trunk, and folded that big box up and shoved it in the back of the trunk because I didn't know where I was going to live at. And I drove about 12 miles out of the town and uh, found the place off to the side of the road that I just pulled off to the side and literally took that box out of the trunk of my car, set it up, and I thought I'll only be here a few days. It probably won't be too long. And I began to live out of that box. Did you ever, in your wildest imagination, think that you would live in a cardboard box? No, the whole time uh, this was going on, I, I kept thinking, why is this happening to me? I was crying out for help. I actually went by uh, a church that I was belonging to at that time, and I asked them for help, and I explained my situation. And they basically replied and said, you're going through some type of Job experience. You need to just go ahead and go through it. And I didn't understand, really, it was the enemy trying to destroy my life. And uh, so every time I tried to get help, it seemed like uh, it just reinforced the difficult situation I was already in. Okay, and, and your car stopped working, so you couldn't go in the, your car at night and warm up right. with the heater. Uh, not, uh, you didn't have money for gas. Right. Um, how cold did it get? It got real cold. You know, Sid, when I parked that car, uh, I thought, uh, I'll, just, I'll be leaving in a few days, and I'll get out of this mess, but the car stopped working. And the, uh, hmm. before I knew it, I rolled into the winter time, and the temperatures began to drop. And one night, it got down to 18 degrees, which is considerably below freezing. And that was one of the toughest nights I had. <laughs> Now, I'm reminded of the time uh, that you said, Lord, it can't get any worse. And then what happened? Well, I was laying in that cardboard box and uh, I was hungry. I had not eaten in four days and, uh, and things were just difficult. There was stress and pressure. And, uh, but I, I said, Lord, one night while I was laying in the cardboard box trying to keep from freezing, I said, Lord, it just cannot get any worse than this. And when I said that, Sid, I literally felt something wet begin to fall on my face and it started to sprinkle, it started raining. And uh, I said, Lord, it did get worse. And so I hit the rock bottom that night. Uh, well, uh, there was something that happened, though. 
uh, he had a post office box and he got an unexpected check for four hundred dollars. Had you been eating much? No, hardly eating anything. Uh, it would depend. It was depending Where'd on. Where'd you what, get food? Well, it was depending on what was available in the trash cans. I, I oh. found out that the uh, some of the local pizza companies, if they didn't sell all their pizzas at night, they would just throw them away. So if there was something in the dumpsters, I ate. If they if there was not, then it was another night of prayer so and fasting. What did you do with that four hundred dollars that came in unexpectedly? Well, it was a shock. It did come in unexpectedly, but I remembered that I had that friend that I had never paid the back rent on. So I went back and I said, listen, I know your dad's the landlord. I want to give you that money so you can take it to him. And I gave Why him the money. Why did you do that? I mean, I mean, it's the right thing to do. But right. here it's 18 degrees. It's raining on you. The right. cardboard is soggy. Your car isn't working. You're eating out of trash cans. Right. $400, Stephen. How right. could you do that? Well, I really wanted to go to the uh, grocery store. Uh, but uh, I knew enough, uh, having been brought up in a Christian home, that there are certain things you need to do in life that are the right things to do. So I took that check and I cashed it at one of these uh, check cashing places. And I took the money over to my friend, he took it to his father, and his father was absolutely shocked that somebody would do that. It was oh, just oh, wanted to honor the Lord. Uh, you, you did have a few dollars cash that you kept. How much? I kept four one dollar bills that I'd never spent. Uh, okay, get this. He remembers a Bible study that he, he went to a couple times. So he goes to that Bible study and they take up an offering. This is a guy that only eats out of trash cans and does a lot of, pr of prayer and fasting because he doesn't have any food. And he puts the four dollars in the offering? How could you do that, well, Stephen? Well, there was a guest minister that night. He said, I'm going to travel down to South America. I want to take medical supplies. I'm going to receive an offering. So they began to pass that offering a basket around the room. And I'm sitting there in that room said, and I literally, a conversation began to go on uh, on each side of my shoulder. It felt like uh, an angel was sitting here and a little evil spirit was sitting over here. And I heard the it, God just so strongly prompted me and said, give your last four dollars. And I, I thought, uh, Lord, I'm going to starve. And I heard a voice on this side say, if you give that, you will starve. And I, I, I thought just for a moment, and the whole time the basket's getting closer to me, and I thought, you know, I'm already starving. I might as well just give it and obey the Lord. And right when I decided to do it, I pulled the money out and the basket showed up. I just threw those four ones into the offering plate and it went around and vanished and the meeting was over. And so you went back to your box and, yes. and you're no food yes. and horrible weather. Yes. Uh, uh, you think it's going to get any worse? Wait till you hear what happens next week. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Last year, God told me to host a supernatural tour to Israel. The tour was such a spiritual highlight, we're going to do another one this year in Jerusalem. And we've purposely kept this top quality tour under $3,000, and that includes all taxes and tips. Call now for a free brochure at 1-800-959-1062 or visit our website at sidroth.org. We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Stephen Brooks. Uh, Stephen is living in a cardboard box his car isn't working. Uh, he's got no no money. Uh, he, he's got he's gave his his last few dollars away in an offering. Uh, it's it's what it's as cold as 18 degrees. You're living yes. off of food and trash cans. Yes. Uh, it can't get much worse, and that does it rains. And you know he's got a cardboard box. He's living. You must have been cold. I did, and also I had the budget cardboard box. It was the one that didn't have a roof on top. Just had four four walls and uh, and a bottom. So I got rain on, I was freezing, and uh, but you know, I gave that four dollar offering, Sid, and before I knew it, a whole week had gone by, and it rolled back around to that midweek service, and the Holy Spirit prompted me again to get ready and go to that meeting. But your car isn't working. I tried to I explain that to the Lord. He said, you get ready, I'll take care of the car. And I said, okay. And so again, the car would not start. I tried to start it during the week. It would not start. That same thing happened to you the first time you went. It didn't start, but exactly. it started. So but you went the first time. That is correct. So right before that meeting, I tried to start the car up and it started up. 
Uh, and so I drove to the meeting as fast as I could, definitely didn't want to stop. Uh, and so I got to the meeting, went, uh, went inside, sat down. But Sid, I, I'd been going through this for quite some time now. I, was, I felt like a rubber band mentally had been stretched and I felt like I was about to snap. I felt I could not, uh, I felt like I'd fallen off the side of the world and nobody had known about me. And so when I went to that and meeting- nobody cared. That's what I felt like, and the enemy was trying to really enforce that, and uh, so there was despair, there was a hopelessness. So I sat down that night, and that minister came out that evening, and he just put his hand on my shoulder, and I felt the heat go all through my body. I grabbed him, and I said, I need to talk to you. He said, come to the back room. We went to a back room, and I just began to weep and cry. I told him everything I'd been going through. He said, Stephen, if you'll go out here and tell the people what you've just shared with me, he said, I believe God will do a miracle for you. And uh, I said, okay, I'll do it. Will you stand with me? He said, yes. And so we walked back out to that room and he told everybody, Stephen has something he would like to say. And I just looked at the people and said, I, I told them, I said, I've been eating out of a cardboard box. I've been eating out of trash cans. I just broke with great weeping and bawling and crying. And a young woman in the, in the group that night, she just popped up. She said, why don't we receive an offering for Stephen? And everybody said yes. And they all just joined in and they put me in the middle and began to toss money at me and financial gifts. And after it was all over, we all, uh, me and that, that minister, we gathered it up, went in the back room and began to count it. Uh, we poured all the money out on the bed. We started counting $20, $60, $80, uh, $200. He stopped and said, this is a pretty good offering for a small group, but we kept on counting $300, $320, $360, $380, We stopped counting at $418. And he got very serious, Said He looked at me, he said, he said, I wanna ask you a question. You tell me the truth. I said, okay. He said, did you give four $1 bills in the offering last week? I said, I did, but I didn't think anybody saw. He said, well, my wife saw you do that. He said, do you know what this is? I said, no. He said, this is the 100 fold return. And uh, said it was, that night I had literally 100 times given but, back. But Stephen, it was better than a 100 fold return yes. because someone gave him a room to sleep in. Yes. Someone gave him a bed. Someone gave him a job. Mm -hmm. And now, as I said at the beginning of the telecast, he is married, has a daughter. Uh, the family travels the world telling people about the goodness of God. But I have to believe it was in those times of nothing to do but pray and read the Bible that it made you who you are today. Something amazing is happening with him. When he speaks, oftentimes there are supernatural fragrances. Uh, not just one person smells it. Many people smell it. And one of the uh, more familiar uh, uh, smells is, is uh, uh, antiseptic. Yes. Explain that. Said many times when I minister uh, in the meetings, there are people with infections or with diseases, uh, uh, infections in the natural that even natural antibiotics can't knock out. And so often when I begin to minister, the fragrance of the Lord will come into the meeting and it's a fragrance that's known in the Bible as Annika. Annika was one of the key ingredients that was used in the holy incense that we read about in Exodus chapter 30. And many times this fragrance of Annika will begin to manifest in the meetings. And in the natural, Annika is a very powerful antiseptic. It's very expensive, very hard to find. But that same uh, fragrance, which is an attribute of the Lord Jesus, begins to manifest in the meetings. And people with some of the most horrendous infections and skin diseases. Now, are, give me one uh, specific one. And I know it happens often, but give me one specific we one. We have it happen in America often, but just recently when I was in India, uh, a lady with a tremendous sinus infection with uncontrollable drainage, severe pain. She was completely healed in the meeting when that beautiful fragrance of the Lord began to go across the room. Hundreds of people smelt it and her, her sinuses in her nose was, was instantly absolutely totally healed. She was overwhelmed with joy. Uh, the pain was all gone. All the drainage was gone. We see this often in the meetings.